this episode on the Ritzy Travel Guide, we're aboard one of the most famous cruise ships in the world, the Cunard Queen Elizabeth on a seven nights jaunt around the Mediterranean. Last video we showed you the ship in all its beauty, this time it's the Ritzy Video Diary Special, where we pull back the curtains on our trip and show you day by day what you can do at sea, how we and others keep themselves occupied, We'll look at some of what we ate. Free champagne to start. What we really thought of the food. You need a chain to store for this one. And we'll investigate all the areas of the ship, inside and out. We'll see just how rough our crews got in places. We get chased around the Mediterranean by Costa. We'll also talk about the dress codes and what people wear and just how posh really is Cunard. And we'll show you the gorgeous ports and cities we visited. Rome! Including one where we go pizza making. So this is the fun video diary edition where you really get to feel you came along with us. Welcome back to the Ritzy Travel Guide. My name is Bill and it's great to have you along with us. This is the second in our series on the Cunard Queen Elizabeth. If you haven't already seen the first part, you can watch after this. It doesn't really matter which order you see them in. In that, you saw the style and period look of the ship. This time, we're going to get a little bit more silly, a little bit more behind the scenes of what really goes into a typical Cunard cruise, and whether you should be immediately whipping out your credit card and booking. So off we go, here's our experience with the Queen Elizabeth, day one embarkation, and one of the pet peeves of any cruise around the world is how long does it take you to get on that ship? Was it a seething mass of people with queues right out the door? Okay, now, just as a comparison to other cruise lines, here we are, the Cunard check-in counter. Positively, not busy, not pulsating, it was one of the quickest and easiest embarkations we've had for many a year. Getting aboard took all of 10 minutes. Quick hello to the Cunard staff in their red pillbox hats and on we go. Immediately congratulate yourself for booking a mid-sized ship with only 2,000 passengers, not a ship which has 6,000 that could easily be cheek by jowl. Loads of calm space here. First night's board is always casual night for most cruise lines. By the time you've got on, got yourself sorted, it's almost time for dinner. You're looking very colourful tonight, may I say. You're, you're blending in with the prawns. I am, and I'm not. Those prawns. And some place with whipped potatoes and a prawn on top, just for decoration. Out of the way, I think it looks like a fish. The way it's, uh -uh. the presentation on your plate is really nice. Oh, have they done a, have they done a smiley fish face? It does look a bit like a fish, doesn't it? I'm on calorie cleansing, so I went for a vegetarian strudel. It's it's vegetarian, but I'm not sure you've yeah. reduced any calories there. I, I might just eat that half. Oh, you said chocolate. Yes, please, chocolate. Thank you. Do you yourself for you? Yes, yes, please. Thank you. After dinner entertainment in the theatre was a trip down Rat Pack Memory Lane in Vegas. Early morning, just had breakfast, and I'd like to report to you that it's a lovely Mediterranean October day, but truth be told, it's a little bit on the breezy side, but we're not deterred, we're going to push on out. Let's see what's going on outside, deck side activities. Well, the sky does look a little bit menacing, but the deck chairs must still go out. Always like coming out on deck on the morning just to get a feel for what's going on, what hubbub, what activities there are. Not overrun with bathers here yet this morning. I feel like I should be whipping out my easel and painting that sky. So we have a body and mind awakening class. We're here to be awakened and spiritually advanced. There's quite a lot of people who are going to be enriched. Eleven o'clock in the morning and all is well in the Mediterranean. Might be October, but it's not bad. It's about 20, 21 degrees, that's about 70, 72 Fahrenheit. And life is starting to emerge outside. It's almost balmy Hawaiian. Well, with some imagination. It's a sea day today, so everybody's bedding in for their various activities. Wellness and health is already over, so 
of people are now very well and healthy, don't need to do anything further, could head straight for the buffet at lunchtime. Cranky, something must have just emptied out. There's a busload that's just arrived at the pavilion pool area. Is this a tour of the ship's facilities? Maybe it is. They're saying, here is the swimming pool. I must follow my leader. All right, pavilion pool jacuzzi test. Slightly bugging sound this morning. Should we call the technician? Do not use the Whirlpool Spa if you are experiencing diarrhea. Okay, thank you. Noted. I was just doing a water test. Yes, I saw. Do you have to test the water? I do have to test the water. Uh, where are you going? Heading to the gym. Because I have a huge breakfast. So I followed my wife into the gym and came out again precisely two minutes later. Shall we pop into the Golden Lion and imagine we're back in England? Now, an absolute institution on any of the Cunard ships is the Golden Lion at their famous pub. Welcome to the Golden Lion, a British institution. You see, look, you can come here and feel like David Niven. And I tell you what, you will not be short of a drink selection. Look, 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 let me just filter through how many pages of drinks there are. And that was just at top speed. It is just page after page after page. Ah, here we are. Fish and chips. Now, is it my imagination, or are portions getting a bit smaller on Cunard? Now, thankfully I'm not starving, having had a reasonable breakfast and a little bit of snack mid-morning. Fairly sure that on previous occasions there was a little bit more than that on the plate. Righty, let's do the crispy test. Yep, that is crispy. Small, but crispy. Now, having been slightly missed that the poor she seemed to have been shrunk in the towel dryer, I have to say that the fish is good, the chips are good, so taste is still there, it's just been miniaturized. And there will be more from the Golden Lion Pub later in this video as we try some different types of food. And so on to our first port of call, which is the enigmatic Naples. Well, good morning everybody. It's a peach of a day. Glorious. The captain just been on the intercom and said it's going to go up to 23. And today, where are we? We're at our first port of call. We're at Naples, Napoli, in Italy. It's almost mesmerizing looking out to this view this morning. And how about that for a clear, glorious view? Okay, let's come and look at the ugly side. Well, I say that because it's more of a container terminal side. I wasn't saying that because of the Costa that is more there or that very old MSC ship, the Aurelia. That looks as though it's been chugging through the high seas for many a year. 7.45 in the morning, day three of the cruise, it occurred to me we haven't been anywhere near the buffet. Let's rectify that one, shall we? Oh, golly, we're not the first here, even though it's 7.40. We've got loads of people rushing to get here this morning. Let's see what we've got. Ah, and we have, there we are. First thing I see, the grilled kippers with lemon. Yeah, that's a huge amount of lemon. We've got some corned beef hash. We've got some very crispy looking bacon. And we have the egg chef whipping out omelettes. Well, who's been attacking that smoked salmon? Was there any more than that? Okay, there's some smoked salmon. Ooh, what have you found in that pot? Blueberry granola. That's a lot of blueberry. You like blueberries for breakfast. Okay, let's take one blueberry compote as well. Ah, and what's our view for the day? Very red out there. And we have a lot to do and see on our port stop today. We're going to be making pizza, and we're going to be going to see the famous underground tunnels. No, just as well we didn't have too much buffet last night. Right, who's up for some pizza making? Coming along to see how that goes? We're going to be flipping in the air with great velocity and to impressive height. Naples, here we come. Ten seconds. Doesn't yeah. take long to get off Cunard ship, does it? And benvenuti to you, Napoli. You can hear loud Italian tour guides already trying to attract us. We don't need you. We are walking straight into town. You have to avoid these alluring Italian men who are going to be uh, pouncing on you. Here, Giovanni is going to come up to you and try and entice you with a tour that you don't want. Well, you managed to navigate that one through those men. You have to beware, they tell you. They are. They're winking at you. 
first cost now. Yes. We want to be on that one. Cunard? Yes. Oh, hang on a minute. How about MSC, that very old MSC in the distance there? Do you want to be on that one? You want to be on that one? That one. That's the one we want to be on, is it? That one. Not any of those. No. They're not there. They're, we'll just blank those out. That one. That one. Got you. Instantly feeling Italian y. Enjoying the vibe. Hey, gang. Bob made it easier. Purchased a cap for the purpose. Here we are. You can see exactly where we are. We're in Rome. No, we are not. Rome. Okay. Let me give you the sights and sounds of Naples. You've got people coming out of restaurants, bars, and cafes. You've got chefs standing in doorways. You've got cars coming at you from every corner. You've got hooting, bikes. In Naples, you must absolutely follow the traffic signs. Because I think the Italians are quite reckless in the driving. I am so on the set of the Italian job. Bank raid should be round the corner any minute. You notice every single car has some form of dance in it. Okay, shh. We're in Naples Cathedral. It's really quite beautiful, actually. We've got to photograph it from almost every angle before we're allowed out. Here we go. Pizza making classes. Right, who's ready for some authentic Napoli pizza making classes? We're going to come out pros. It's all rather theatrical we're sitting here. Under the lights, Sophia Loren behind us. Um, Okay. Okay. okay, the instruction of the day is fold and push, fold and push. Fold and push, fold and push, fold and push, brothers. Okay, apparently got to spread it in a clockwise direction, otherwise bad spirits come jumping out at you. In comes the buffalo mozzarella. All it takes is 90 seconds, labours of our hard work. It's going to taste super delicious because we made it. Look at that. So there we go, we're bona fide certified pizza makers. We shall put that on the kitchen wall. Later in the afternoon we went subterranean under the city to see the famed tunnels dating back to Roman times. It's well worth seeing those. And then we had a saunter around the city. What would you say? I'm trying to explain what we're seeing. It's, it's a little bit bohemian. It's, it's got a little bit of this and it's got a little bit of that. Well, we've absolutely walked our feet off going round Napoli today and thought we deserved a coffee. In France, you'd have a noisette, but this is a much more creamy version, and it's called the Café Brasiliano. That is so decadent, it's got a really strong shot of coffee in there. And you can watch the full version of our day out in Naples in our upcoming video, where you can see far more than we're able to show you here. And this port series covers not just the ports we covered on this particular cruise, but all of the ports we visit on our cruises throughout the year. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up, as it lets us know you're enjoying it and would like to see more of this type of material. Well, I suppose this is a great exercise in finding out what one does on a windy, wet, bleak day when you're at sea on a cruise ship. Ah! But we do have some decoys going on. Bravo, well done, hardy deck coiters. Okay, is there a certain technique here? Is there a certain expertise going on here? They have a look of people who know. Ah, maybe not. Very quiet this morning. Everybody's still in bed. See the insulation. Morning. Morning. It's a very late start. Everybody's decided to spend their additional sea day in bed. It's us in the sea. Lemon ginger. I'm going to burn off some of that happening. Golden lion pup dinner we had last night. We could instantly lose about three pounds this morning. Just the benefit of the lemon ginger tea. Well, that's a very nice looking breakfast. What have we got here? A bit of smashed harvo. Avocado with poached eggs and a generous portion of salmon. Despite it being a little bit choppy out to sea, there was a chef's demonstration we could go off and watch. And this morning's activity at 11 o'clock in the garden lounge is an Indian cooking demonstration. Lots of avid people waiting to learn how to cook their favourite Indian takeaway dishes. Okay, what are we going to learn how to make today? What's on there? Some curries? A lot of 
things for not a lot of instructions, you know what I mean? Oh, well, I hope there's going to be some tasting after. Good morning. Up. Chef Chikazi at Tarin. And Sweet Chef Kim. So they're almost celebrity chefs here in Cunard land. The aromas wafting up from there are delicious. The very thought of food made my wife scurry off to the gym. Center, right at the bow of the ship, you have the gym. Let's take a peek, see what's going on there, what activities and facilities they have. Ah, I found my wife, she's in the gym again, working off that afternoon tea that I had that she didn't. Well done her, on our behalf. Jim actually has a really cracking view right at the front of the ship. You can exercise yourself into the distance, into oblivion. Okay, for appearance sake and no other reason really, let me do a little bit of cycling in the gym to give the impression to myself that I'm actually doing something to work off the afternoon tea. According to the machine, I'm cycling around the islands of Greece although out the window, cycling my way across the ocean. It's interesting to note that when I've been going past the gym, it's at its busiest after afternoon tea. Guilt kicks in. So as you can see, I didn't really spend very long in the gym. Instead, I decided to walk off to the Lido Buffet and test out the Build Your Own Pizza Station. Now, of course, I could have been an absolute busybody and told them I was now an absolute professional, having attended a course in Naples, but I didn't, I bit my tongue, and watched them do it instead. Well, here we are. This is an interesting corner of the Lido Buffet. We're at the Pizzeria. We could, of course, go over there and choose a ready-made one, but how boring would that be? So I've gone for the section where you create your own pizza. I don't know if there's a limit, but I've gone for about 11. And I should be back in 10 minutes to see whether I've made an absolute dog's dinner of it, or whether it was a masterstroke of genius putting so many things on top. And here is the product of my imagination. It's crispy. It's been in there. It took about 20 minutes from beginning to end to come, so I have to keep going backwards and forwards seeing his line ready, but there we are. Is it a mess? For those who are extremely healthy, it's a tuna poke bowl. That's very healthy. About 11 calories. Well done. I think I went a bit <coughs> heavy on the chilli. Oh, he put a lot of chilies in. That's very, very chilliish and a lot of blue cheese. So basically, blue cheese and chilli. Following lunch, I had a message from a viewer on YouTube saying, please show us the shops. Alrighty. Well, right above that slightly irritating casino sound we can hear below us, we've got some shops. Should we go and take a peep? Let's see what Cunard merch we should stock up on. Clearance event. We're positively running towards here to snap some things up. And here we go. This is the table you've been waiting for. The Queen Elizabeth souvenirs, all popping out and jumping, say, buy me, buy me now. We've got the Queen Elizabeth coffee mug. Here we are, a steal at 16.50. That would look nice on your sideboard at home, wouldn't it? And your mini flask. Here we are, 24.25. What a little miniature Queen Elizabeth glass ship, if you'd want one. Oh, now you see, wouldn't this look smart for your posh gatherings at home? 1750. And the formal wear section, you see there, panic not. If you'd forgotten your bow tie or your waistcoat or your suspenders or your natty tie and you think, I can't go in the main dining room, I can't appear at the formal night. Well, you can, you see, they got backups. You can even do your nails, toenails. This is the rain jacket we need today. The Polartec Micro Series with synthetic fleece. It'll set you back just $204. Is that grabbing you? Is that a bargain? Not many people out on deck on a blustery day like this. Deck chairs are there, comfy cushions, but nobody on them. So it's too blustery outside. Let's see if we can keep upright inside. I tell you what, this afternoon the ship is starting to lurch a little. It's a big swell. We're starting to be on the angle. Got to be careful with our walking. Starting to lean a bit, isn't it? You were thinking, hang on a minute, you've had a few too many drinks there. <laughs> Past the cool people who didn't get to the afternoon tea early enough. We could have gone to the afternoon tea in the Queen's room, but we'd already done that twice. 
So we'll have to go into hushed tones. Now, we're slowly swaying and rocking at sea, and I hear the bookcases talking to me. Can you hear? It's the swaying of the ocean. If we were in a Harry Potter movie, what would that be telling us? By the way, we always love to hear from you, so if there's anything you'd like to say, anything on your mind, please do drop a comment in the box below. Perhaps you disagree with us vehemently about something. Perhaps we've missed something out. Perhaps we've got something wrong. Do drop a comment below in the box. And today we're arriving in Civita Vecchia, on the outskirts of Rome. We all know it's not really Rome. When they say it on the itinerary, we know it's not really Rome. It's a bit like Southampton for London. Nowhere near. There's a stiff breeze out this morning. It's going to be windy Rome. Is it me or do we sometimes think that this time of day, Cunard looks a little bit like Walt Disney? We could be at Orlando upon sea sometimes looking at that one. Let's see who's up with the lark. Well, of course, the trusty deck crew are. They don't need rulers to space them out. They've been doing this long enough. After having paced the decks unnecessarily, I had to scurry down because we had decided to test out room service. Hello? Ah, good morning. Is this our room service? Yeah. Breakfast. Now, for those who don't know, room service is included. There aren't many lines still left afloat that provide room service totally complimentary included in the price and this always seems to be the case they keep bringing it and bringing it and bringing it and you're thinking did i really order that much apparently we did order that much and in the meantime costa who seemed to have been following it around the mediterranean rolled up too we'll be in rome together bellissimo i think they've got the weather forecast a little bit wrong they said it was going to be 26 to 27, sunny and t-shirt weather. Well, maybe it is in Rome. Certainly Civita Vecchia is looking a little bit more stormy. Might have to rethink what I'm gonna wear into the city. Right, let's go ashore. Oh, are we going through sick bay? What are we going through? It's always interesting to see the inner bowels of the ship, isn't it? They start with bicycles, What, the trucks start bicycles? Where's the Cunard bike? I'd like a Cunard bike. Time to catch our one and a half hour coach trip into Rome. Past the Colosseum, right into the centre. And here we go, first stop, stop number one, San Pietro. Let's see how close we can get to it, because it's notoriously busy. Okay, we've arrived at St Peter's Square, the Basilica. To say it's jammed would be an understatement. It's jammed, squared, cubed, central. Let's try and find a way through the throng, the seething masses of people. Apparently, it's there. It's behind there. Behind these millions of people, it's there. They were queuing like two kilometres just to get into the square. Yes, where the Pope stands there and waves to the people and gives a speech. We're at the Trevi Fountain. Well, us and 50,000 other people. There's a lot of people here. Would that be fair to say? Look, they're standing on top of each other, on shoulders, on shoulders, on shoulders, on shoulders to get there. It's a very popular spot. And pretty much you've got to do what we did, which is just bide your time, just go to the front and wait. And eventually, you will get your shot. It's just having perseverance. I tell you what, today's video on Rome could be all about the fact that it's just crowds. I think we're not even confused here, yeah, too many people. If you're too high, you don't get the water. If you're too low, you don't get the statue. If you're right in the middle, you get all the people. Today is a day of crowds. When here must try ice cream. What's it like? 100% melted chocolate. Is it heaven? Is it heaven in a tub? Is that what you'd call it? Basically chocolate and cream. Is it? 
I've never had chocolate ice cream. Have you not? Have you never had it as good as this? Our you, chocolate you, ice cream is mean, rightly serious. famous. You try. Really? You try. Once again, this was just a snippet of our time in Rome, and coming out very shortly, we have a dedicated video of exactly what we got up to. So remember to be subscribed to our channel. Now, subscription doesn't cost you anything, it's absolutely free, and just saves you going backwards and forwards, finding out if a new video has come out. Just taking a look at the ship from the dock at Rome, ship to Vecchia. See how the Queen Elizabeth is looking. I tell you what, the wind is picking up. It could be a bumpy ride going out of Chibi to Vecchia tonight. Batten down the hatches. Batten down your balcony tables. In the meantime, my wife wanted to get her dancing shoes on. It was 70 soul night in the Queen's room. You see, it's not only the old time ballroom music in here. We then went off to theatre to watch what was billed as a comedian. And then we felt a little bit peckish, which means only one thing, trying out the midnight buffet. All righty, we've moseyed up to the ninth floor. It's almost midnight. If we're a little bit peckish, or a little bit thirsty, what can we be tempted with? Well, a little section of the Lido buffet is still open for midnight buffet purposes. Let's see if there's anything that can tempt us. You've got some half-eaten cookies. You've got some cinnamon cake. I jest, obviously, they're not a half eaten. They're, they're beaten and battered up a bit. You have some cinnamon cake. I'm not sure what that one is at the back. They haven't said that. Say, it looks like a vegetable stew, maybe. Well, you have a selection of biscuits digested, dates, and nuts. When it's almost midnight and you've nothing else to do, come out on deck to play midnight golf. May I remind it's almost midnight. <laughs> The next day, we were supposed to be in a Jackie O Corsica. Well, that's what was printed in the daily itinerary. Where do you think we actually were? Well, good morning, everybody. We have an update. We were supposed this morning to be steaming towards a Jackie O in Corsica from Rome, but the captain came on the intercom last night and said no, due to heavy winds, the harbour master has closed the port. So that is off. So they've added in an extra sea day, bobbing around in the Mediterranean. A quick look out to see. Does that look as though it's too rough to go to a Jackio? Well, apparently so. Listen to that wind. Hark at the wind. All right, well, first thing to notice on our unexpected sea day, the pools are shut. Added to which it's starting to rain. So I do feel like we've come to Alaska. Well, this is an unexpected bonus, dear viewer. You thought you were tuning in to see a Mediterranean cruise, but we have a two-in-one feature. We're suddenly on an Alaskan cruise. Here we are. Could be for all the world coming into Ketchikan. But hark, I hear pickleball or cruise tennis on a miniature shrub down tennis court. Wimbledon at sea. Let's go and see the croquet. I feel there's activity afoot. We're not letting this puff of wind, this merest whisper, put us off. Hardy people on the pitch. Is it a pitch? On the lawns. On the astroturf. We like this grit and determination of cruisers. Might sound like we're in an inverted vacuum cleaner steaming towards Juno, but we're actually in the Mediterranean. Who knew? Now, do we allow for the wind? Are we putting a bit of left to right or right to left on this one? You might not be aware of it, but on the Queen Elizabeth, there is a deck side chessboard perched right at the top of the ship. It's obviously a very, very serious contest going on here. All righty, well, it's a sea day. Let's have a wander around. Let's see how we can fill our day with fun-filled activities, riveting pursuits to be doing while we're on the high seas. Well, I can instantly hear something stage right at the Queen's Room, beckoning me to find out what's going on. Away from the shops, we'll come back to those in a minute. Let's see the activity. There's something very vigorous going on that we need to see immediately. Oh, and we've happened upon Cherobics, where you can do your exercise from the comfort of your own chair. By Jove. Look, it's being done with a certain amount of gusto. We're burning off all that early morning bacon. Are you itching to get on your seat? The irony is they are really dressed very 
They, they have gym shoes and bandanas. Oh really? Have they come suitably attired? With their sneakers. You could be doing this in your living room while you're watching this. You could join in and imagine the experience you're here aboard Cunard doing it with them. As we go up these staircases, we can just imagine if it could have been us in the 1950s boarding a Cunard ship. So enigmatic. Look at that. We should be on deck doing a wave like that. Similar, Larry. Just like that. People don't dress like that for dinner anymore. Well, they don't know. I mean, that's... that's so quite a... that. It is Elizabeth Taylor. It's almost a bit revealing, that outfit, Elizabeth Taylor, isn't it? I can't say that. Can you say that? Oh, I thought you could. Now, anything you're immediately tempted to buy that should be going in our living room right this second. So it's quite a big, nice piece of artwork. Mm. That's twenty-seven thousand. Oh, sorry. Hang on a minute. Twenty-seven thousand dollars. Is it? All right. Twenty-seven thousand dollars. Yes. Could be Barcelona. It could be Maria. We spotted her when we boarded in Barcelona at one of those bars. Oh, and I tell you what's going on there. It's last-minute purchasing of props and gear for the masquerade ball. People who haven't remembered or didn't get the memo didn't realise that it's masks, sort of compulsory, but not really, but encouraged. If you don't have one, you might feel a bit left out. Fortunately, we brought ours. Masquerade ball mask. Does the average Cunard cruiser still dress up to the nines for the gala events? Let's take a look. And ta-da! Because tonight is the Masquerade Ball. Everybody's dressed beautifully into the nines on gala evening. You, let, you, you look like you wanted to be on. <laughs> Free champagne to start. Well, this is quite artistic. We We've got duck parfait. What are you having? We have surf and turf. On most cruise lines, when you go to gala night, they make a little bit of an effort. They push the boat out a little bit. I say it looks very pretty. Hmm? That beef mignon. Is tender. Is it melt in the mouth, is it? Yeah, it does. That is milk. Shall I tell you what I'm not doing? Mm. I'm not putting mm. my elbows on the table. It was an instant, a video or two ago, when I had a bad back that evening. And I might have just lent my elbow just momentarily on the table. I hear some music. It's coming from the Queen's room. There are people whisking their way round the dance floor. Let's find out what's going on. Gala nights aboard Cunard are a huge amount of fun. Passengers love these themed balls, and these nights are often the highlights of the cruise. There's a certain peace and quiet at the end of the day as we steam off to our next port of call. So the next port of call was in Spain, the delightful Palma de Mallorca one of the highlights of any cruise to the Mediterranean. Cruise ships moor about four miles out of town. If you enjoy a hearty stroll and it's sunny, you can make it on foot round the beautiful Marina Walk. It takes about 40 minutes to get into town. But as we were in a hurry that day, we took the shuttle bus. Downtown Palma is really photogenic. I defy you not to take endless pictures and put them on Instagram in milliseconds. Once you've spent the morning there, a popular side trip is to take a vintage train to Solon, which we did, and, and I can heartily recommend it. Love all the trains. Aren't they fun? It's one hour to the mountain village, and is picture postcard gorgeous. We're in the centre of Solon, right by the church. Having our coffee, and the tram goes right past us, just inches away. I have to say, I think Sola is one of the most cute, fun, enchanting, tiny little towns I've been to for a very long time. 
And yes, we do have a video of our trip to Mallorca. You're getting the hang of things, and you can see that coming up in our playlist in the next couple of days. Back to the Queen Elizabeth, and it's time for pre-dinner drinks. This time at the Golden Lion Pub. On other occasions, it had been the Commodore Club, but this time we were walking past the pub and heard the piano and thought it would be nice to sit down and listen. A quick change of clothes and then it was off to the famous Veranda Restaurant, an alternate dining venue that is so popular with loyal Cunard fans. We showed you some of this in our previous video and as you saw from that, it was a delightful evening. Our final visit on this cruise was to the amazing Barcelona. We will keep that for a future special video edition. We do hope you've enjoyed this video diary series and we're gonna try and include it for all upcoming cruises. It's our little peek behind the scenes so you can see what we did day to day. Now don't forget this has been episode two in our series about the Queen Elizabeth. Have you watched episode one? That's titled Elegant Cruising. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave the link in the description. But we have several other videos coming out in the pipeline. An interesting one coming out soon is the differences between the Cunard ships, because people wonder which of the Cunard ships they should book. Should it be the Queen Mary II, the Victoria, or the new Queen Anne, or this, the Elizabeth? So that video will guide you through the differences between the various Cunard ships. And for something completely different, we will be aboard the brand new Celebrity Ascent in January. This is Celebrity's latest and most expensive cruise ship ever. And it will be an intriguing cruise because we want to see whether Celebrity is a good alternative to Cunard, because you can't go on Cunard all the time. Sometimes you feel like a change. So several videos about to be released on our channel in the next few weeks. While waiting for those, we have several already on our playlist you could take a look at. And you can look at some of those there, and you can look at some of those here. Thanks so much for joining us on the Ritzy Travel Guide. We'll see you in those.